recently, Premium Bandai announced that Sun Long Gundam Liao Ya unit is gonna get a reissue. So I thought it's gonna be a very good time to make a video about this Gompa right here because maybe some of you would like to get this Gompa. So, you know, I was thinking like, why not give you guys some advice about it? You know, I might be not the first one to give you advice, but you can take my advice as well. So anyway, Hey, how's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Zenworks channel. Today, I'm going to be unboxing the Shenlong Gundam Liao Ya unit. And this is from the manga, the Endless Wars, The Glory of Losers. For the Wing series, I think uh, so far, the Heavy Arms, the Death Scythe Hell, oh wait, actually Death Scythe, Heavy Arms, Sandrock, and Shenlong, they all got their own variation release already. Don't worry, I'm trying to get the Heavy Arms and Death Scythe uh, the Death Side variation and the Heavy Arms unit as well. So those two reviews definitely on the way and will be coming out maybe like three months later. Uh, depend on how successful was my deal. But anyway, that's not the point today. Today, the point is to unbox this Liao Ya unit right here. I will try to make the review video as soon as possible because, you know, I know that people are gonna is going to start pre-ordering it. So anyway, Right now, let's take a look at the box art right here. This is the Shandong Gundam holding the Liao Ya, Liao Ya sword, whatever that calls. Um, just holding it and just standing there. So the box art, let's be honest, there's not much things for me to take a look at. So why don't we just go straight to looking at the runners first. Here we are, the instruction menu. So first we got the water slide decal um, instruction right here. That's a lot of water slide decals, which means my eyes are definitely gonna go blind. And also, uh, we got the Liao Ya unit and the new shield instruction and then you know one part's been left out that's it and for the color guide down here so let's be honest the Liao Ya unit there's not really much things that is new because let's be honest only one gigantic sword and a new shield and also an additional stand and water side decals that's it so personally if you want to looking for new parts about this gamper that's not gonna be much and here we are this is the you know, regular instruction menu, not going to be very interesting, but you can take a look at this. So we got the story playback, you know, it's all in Japanese. So forgive me, I cannot read a single word. So that's it. We got the storyline, blah, 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 keep going. Mm, that's it. So that's it for the instruction menu. Honestly, there's not much things to look at. So let's take a look at the runners quickly. We got the D1 and D2 runner. So first, let's take a look at the D1. Uh, I haven't built a, a Shandong Gundam Master Grade before, so it's very hard for me to guess the parts. I will try my best though. So this will be the skirt armor. I think it's the back skirt. And then the rest of it, these parts right here. I can tell this is the hand armor and the rest of them. Sorry, I cannot guess any of them. So for the hitch runner right here, we got the, it's from the Shenlong Gundam EW. This will be the parts of the legs. And then you got some part of the arms. <laughs> Rest of them, again, it's very hard for me to guess it. For the C1 and C2 runner right here. Mm, let's just take C1 as the example. And uh, C1 runner right here, again, we can see some legs part right here. We can see some legs part and this will be the uh, side skirt. Is it a side skirt? No, no, it's not. And um, we got the head. This might be the head. And we got the pilot figure of Zhang Wu Fei and also the Gundam face. For the E runner right here, ooh, it's really blue. And we got the torso right here. We got some torso, torso, torso. And then we got... What's, which part is this? This is the shoulders or not? Um, oh, it's very hard for me to guess. We got the clear stand for you to shoot out the Liao Ya sword. We got the G runner. This is the Ultron Gundam uh, Endless Wars and also the um, Shenlong Gundam Endless Wars version of the inner frame. So again, let's just take a brief look about it because I don't know how to guess it. We got XA and XB runner, two of them. So this is the universal frame of the W series. And uh, let's be honest, let me just put it out like this. For the XB, it will be something like this. And for the XA, it will be something like this. So, oh, hands option right here. And then we got some waist part. Hmm, that's it, I think. 
We got the A runner right here. Hmm, sort of colorful. We got the white part, red part, clear piece, and yellow part. This will be the torso and uh, antenna. And then we got the these two parts right here. I'm not sure. This might be the middle of the shield. And then we got some feet part right here. And also part of the torso again. And then the clear piece is clearly for the head. So we got the F runner right here. First, we can see the main weapon. And then we also, uh, is it the main weapon called Dragon Fang? Oh wait, no, Dragon Fang is the thing that uh, Sun Long Gundam shoot out. What's, what's the thing that he holds? Ah, oh, I forgot, Trident? Is that called a Trident? Beam Trident, I think. Um, um, and then we got the shield right here. Rest of them is just like some very small piece. We got the beam trident effect parts, stickers, polycaps, water slide decals, and also finally the eye runner, the only new runner of this kit. So I can pretty much tell that this premium Bandai, I might tell you to skip it at the end. So uh, first right here, you can see the Liaoya unit. And then we also got the new shield as well. And I think that's pretty much it. I just checked the unboxing length. I think I should be combining the unboxing and the review together for this video. So don't worry guys, I will see you at the review. Hey guys, welcome back to the review of the Shandong Gundam Liaoya unit. So this is the finishing of the whole Master Grey. At the beginning of the review, let's just say it like this. Although it's a premium Bandai, but it don't really waste parts because let's be honest, one runner that is completely new and only one piece that got left out is the original shield of the Shandong Gundam. So this premium Bandai, how should I say that? Um, it doesn't really have the new parts because as I just said, one runner that is completely new and that's it. So this premium Bandai is, is really awkward. It don't really have that. It don't really have a lot of new parts for you to play with. And also, as I was building this Gaupla and actually playing with the articulation and everything on this Gaupla, I feel like I'm, I just went onto the time machine because, you know, this is a really early Master Grade 2011. So the articulation, the overall detail is not going to be too good. Let's be honest. But anyway, how about I just show you on video instead of just explain to you with words. So let's start the review now. As always, we'll start with the head. So. Before I go into the articulation, how about we just take a moment and then discuss about the design on the head. So design on the head, I actually pretty like them because not only the head design reminds me of the Astray Gold Frame Amatsumina. Yes, don't blast me yet. I know it's from a different timeline, but I'm just saying that it kind of reminds me of that design. Um, although they're a different timeline, the Shandong Gundam right here, I think on the Amatsumina is like an extra chin, but for the Shandong Gundam, I think is from the Chinese dragon tooth design thing, uh, whatever that call. So let's just take a look of the articulation really quickly. So first, the lift up angle is really nice because there's a joint inside to help you to lift the head even higher. So lift down, you know, it's pretty average. And then, you know, moving around is around, I would say, little bit more than 45 degrees because you know as i just said the stick out part of the chin right here is actually bumping into the chest piece so it really affects your articulation right here take a look at the chest right here we can see the design element from the chinese warriors chest plate personally i love this design but the colors i don't really like them <laughs> Also, this torso right here, because back in the days, I don't think Master Grade have like a really complicated joint design. So all they do is just two big ball joints snapping together. So this chest right here, uh, or torso, whatever you want to call it, it's not going to have a lot of extra movements. Let's just say it like this. So front and back, it's really limited, side to side, barely. And then, you know, moving 360 is pretty free as well, because there's absolutely no interruption for moving around. For all the Master Grade, you can always open the cockpit. But for the Shandong Gundam, I suggest you to borrow some too to open it up. So it will be pretty simple. You can just pull down the cockpit like this. And it's a pretty straightforward open. And it's very hard for you to see the pilot actually. So here's the torch. And you can see that Chang Gu Fei is sitting in there. And it's really hard to see actually. Let's quickly go through the arms articulation. So first, the shoulder piece right here, we got a little bit of movement. Moving 360, absolutely free. Lift up more than 90 degrees. But the bending is actually really disappointing. A little bit over than 90 degrees is really disappointing about the bending right here. The whole arm, we can rotate. 
and also we can move to the front and back front and back front and back like this for the hands right here you can see that only the thumb is movable it's not like i don't like the shape of the hands it's just i really feel like why <laughs> why you need to do this because you know personally i'm a pretty weird person as well i prefer the masquerade hand either fixed like the rg version you know the rg version we got the open hand the fist hand and we got the weapon holding hand assemble it together and we just switch around or you either make it like the hyakushiki crash that I revealed before is full movable because right now it's really awkward why do you only give me a hand that only moves the thumb it's like it's really weird and awkward what if you want to switch the hands option right here? Well, here you go. This is how you switch the hands option. You just simply um, take the bottom part of the hand out and then just switch around. So we got the open hand, we got the holding hand, and then we got the weapon holding hand specifically that you have a spot in there for you to plug into the weapons so you can hold it more stable. Let's take a look at the waist right here. So first, let's take a look at the front skirt. You know, you can lift up. But if you want to move the legs this time, I found it out by myself. It didn't set in the instruction menu. But uh, if you want to kick to the front, you don't move the side. You don't move the front skirt like this. You actually move it to the side to to let the let the legs kick out like this. So it's a bit weird actually because honestly, the front skirt lift up angle is not really that much. We are talking about like. 45 degrees maybe and for the side skirt right here we got like a very small movement right here and also um the side skirt i do want to complain a little bit of thing about it so uh for the side skirt when you over move it um because it's you know snap onto the side skirt right here because the side skirt joints is actually not really that tight sometimes when you over move it it will pop out and it would disassemble itself which means the blue part and the white part would just disassemble itself um it can be quite annoying when you're posing with your gambler turn it to the back right here you can see that the back skirt honestly there's not much movement on the back skirt as well it's just like the front skirt around like 45 degrees lifting up it's time for us to check out the legs articulation so first kicking to the front mm, really nice nine degrees kicking to the back uh meh mm, it's not really that good kicking to the side uh 90 degrees is mm, it's pretty nice actually and for the bending though, perfect U-shape. But this bending right here, I feel like the inner frame can do more things because right now we don't see that very obvious linking effect when we are moving the legs. It's just like a really standard like XG type uh, bending. So it might be a little bit boring. It's just my personal opinion anyway. So uh, the other movement will be the feet right here. You can move front and back a little bit side to side as well. And that's it for the legs articulation and the feet. It's actually not that much. For the Shenlong Gundam, we don't have any fancy backpacks. All we got is just a, like a really standard thruster backpack like this. And actually, the thruster cannot even move. So it's really boring, actually. But if you want to put the beam trident later, you can switch this middle blue piece part right here to this part right here. You can just simply plug it on and then you can store the beam trident on the backpack. But keep that in mind, it's a really small piece, so make sure you be careful where you store it. Since we finished the articulation and the overall body articulation thing, so now let's take a look at the accessories right here. So first we got is the main weapon, the beam trident right here. We got the beam effect parts, it's pretty easy to put it on, and then you can just put it out if you don't want to use it. If you want to store this weapon on the backpack, um, Here's the plug right here, and then you can just plug it on to the backpack like this. Coming up next, we got the dragon fang right here. So the eyes right here is obviously going to be the foil sticker. This dragon fang right here is different than the TV version right here. So the TV version is smaller and you can extend out and crush the enemy. For the glory of loser version, the dragon fang, you cannot extend it. Um, it's just used as a crushing weapon. But if you ask me, do I like the TV version or this Glory of Losers version? I actually like this version better because this version right here looks really powerful. So we have some movements on this Dragon Fang right here. So for example, the back of the Dragon Fang right here. I don't know why make this part movable. It's, it's, <laughs> it's really awkward. Uh, anyway, so the Dragon Fang right here, we can extend it and then use it as a crushing weapon as well, as I just mentioned. So we can just open it up like this. To put the dragon vang onto the gunplay is pretty simple. This is the spot you plug onto the forearm. And this is how you put it on. Welcome to the only new part of this kit, the Liaoyang unit. So 
as I just mentioned at the beginning of the video, um, the only leftover part is going to be the shield because right now the shield is connected to a wire. But I do want to say something about this wire right here. This wire looks like a shoelace more than the mechanical wire. At the end of the wire, we got the big sword, Liaoya sword, I think that's called. And this sword right here, I absolutely love the design. This design is amazing. I can play with it for a very long time. It's really amazing, this design. And for the Liaoya unit right here, one of the special things is that you can pull out the wire and then, you know, you can roll it into the shield like this. Um, on the instruction menu, it said that it's around 210 millimeters. Um, according to my very precise professional calculation, um, it's around 250 millimeters. That's the maximum. If you go any further than that number, your wire will get stuck into the shield and you have to disassemble the whole shield to get the wire out and re rewire it again. Wow, that's a really awkward word. But uh, I'm just saying that that part right there might be a little bit disappointing, but make sure you do your calculation before you roll in the wire into the shield. So make sure don't go any further than 250 millimeters. To put on the Liaoya unit is actually really simple. Let the Gaopla hold the sword and then you just put the shield back on the forearm and this is how you put on the Liaoya unit. It's pretty stable actually. Lastly, the Liaoya unit can be thrown out as well. In order to recreate the scene, uh, Bandai actually gave you the stand to hold it, but this stand right here honestly is not really that reliable. You need to take some time to adjust the position in order to let the sword hold properly. So just telling you that the Liaoya unit can be thrown out and they also gave you the base for you to um, pose it. Anyway, this will be the end of the review. Thank you guys for watching this video. I'll just give my quick summary of this Shandong Gundam Liaoya unit right here. If you don't own a Shandong Gundam, like myself, I think you can consider buying this. If you have the regular release version, then strike skip this premium Bandai. Because for those of you that don't have this master grade right here, I'll just use my local store as, uh, as an example. So for the local store, the regular release version is selling around $100 to $115. But for the premium Bandai version is around $140. So um, it's your call, but I would say that $20 to buy another runner is... Um, so like average okay so i would say that unless you never own a regular release then you can consider the premium bandai if you have the premium bandai just skip this one so this will be the end of the video thank you guys for watching this video like this video subscribe to me and hit the bell next to the subscribe button so you can get notified whenever i upload a new video and i'll see you in the next review goodbye